extra time. Porikar Google Hook, Ba Bouncer. Chaya Prakashuni has the answer. Chaya Prakashuni. Hi, this is Misha Ghosh, wishing all of you a warm welcome to Extra Times 2017-18 Hero ISL Team Preview. Alongside with me is Suman Chakraborty, football analyst and football commentator. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. As you all might be wondering, this season's ISL will be a 10-team affair and the duration of this league will be of 5 months compared to the other seasons which was held for 3 seasons. Today's topic of discussion is two times champion and one time same finalist Atletico de Kolkata. Today at first, I would love to ask the questions about the reverse structure of the league. Yes, in fact, uh, it will be a different uh, perspective altogether. As we know in the previous seasons, in the first three seasons rather, it was uh, a three months affair. And if you compare to the league structure as well, it was eight teams who used to participate and this time there will be two new teams who will be participating. One is Bengaluru FC used to play in the I-League and definitely Jamshedpur FC would be new to the uh, ISO structure to be precise and also in the con context of Indian football despite the fact that they had uh, a huge uh, uh, you know, context to be precise in terms of Indian football by developing Indian players. They had the Tata Football Academy who has been developing Indian players for years. So they have the origin, they have the base to produce quality footballers to Indian football and I do believe that this is, this is uh, larger than ever in fact uh, because even, even though it's, it's, it's a fact that uh, on the 2019-20 season so it would be a different league or perhaps there would be a one league but and nevertheless in fact when you know players like Zakina and I mean, Flora Maluda, Mercerino like players who are coming to play Indian football and playing three months their class was hardly being depicted, but it's not for a longer term. Now there would be a real test. Now there would be a real test in terms of the Indian players as well. So all the teams who are playing in this Hero Indian Super League, if you go back to the draft, the Indian players draft as well as the international players who have been recruited for all the teams who are playing in the Hero Indian Super League, there were some definite plans in terms of recruiting them, uh, especially in, in uh, the Indian player structure, all the teams are giving a lot of importance about scouting Indian talents who are under 21 levels. There were no barriers, no stipulation in terms of recruiting or retaining Indian under 20 to 21 players. So if you go back to Jerry Lalvinswala, Anirudh Thapa and players like Vidyananda Singh who are under 21 players but have, have huge potential. So they have been uh, retained or being signed uh, well before uh, the Indian players draft. So the thought process was always there to recruit a team, to build a team for the next three, four, five years. All the teams are giving contracts to the players, Indian players for the two, three, five years so that they can settle down to build a sport, which is good in terms of Indian football because the biggest problem in Indian football and not only Indian football, in, in, in Asian football to be precise is that the teams easily get carried away with the things. That's why one or two seasons failure forced the teams to cut down that particular player. So the entire balance of the team gets reshaped. So those things also played a very important part. Previously, in the Hero Indian Super League, but we have seen that players were coming uh, over 30, age of, uh, 30 years of age. So in terms of the endurance, in terms of the prime of their career, that has been well passed. But now, if you look at all the teams who are playing in the Hero Indian Super League, you'll go and see that there are a lot of teams who are recruiting players uh, were 22, 23, 25. So the recruitment process of the Indian players have also been changed. The mindset have also been changed. Yesterday, as we all know, Tom Turf has been signed by uh, Atletico de Kolkata, who is a Manchester United graduate and played in 2014-15 season under the reign of Louis Van Aal. So he's a young player. Zakina, another forward who came in place of uh, Yan Hume. So all these players, Ian Hume was 35, perhaps this also played uh, as a part of thinking that, okay, we'd be going for a different player, we'd be young, we'd be exuberant, and at the same time, who has exposure of playing in the highest level. So that's not about Atletico de Kolkata. All the teams except FC Goa, who have relied more on experience rather than the youth, it's, it's more, than, more or less, it's been very much the same. So it's, it's always important to give the priority to the, to the teams, the thought process, the concept. So that has been a large change to be precise if you look uh, to this year's structure of Hero Indian Super League. 
apart from the fact that it's been a marathon league, there's also going to be the Champions League. What's your say on that? Well, Champions League, uh, to be precise, for this season onward, I don't think there'd be much sense to be precise in terms of the Champions League. It would be just another ISL compared to the previous seasons where the champions didn't get the chance or opportunity to play in the continental level. It's very much similar to that. Unlike the ISL of this season onwards, where the champions might get the chance to play in the AFC playoffs. So, it would be just like uh, a champion of champions. The four teams would be playing in the I League, the champions, the runners up, the third and fourth place teams, as well as the same structure would be followed in the ISL as well. So, the eight teams would be playing, it would be a different to, uh, you know, competition altogether because the ISL teams, as we all know, they have better players in terms of the foreigners. The Indian players, they also have quality players, but on the flip side of that, you, you cannot turn down the context of I League as well because in the previous season, as you know, ISL FC, they didn't have any star. The team was the star. The formation was the star. The coach was the star. The fan base was the star. So football is never played on papers. All it matters is that how are you depicting yourself, how are you performing yourself, how are you performing as a team. So this is a very important thing in the context of Indian football. Is Bengal and Mohan Bagan, despite the fact that the ISL teams have roped on a lot of Indian players, quality Indian players like Pritam Kotal has left Atletico, I mean uh, Mohan Bagan, at the same time um, Devjit Mazumdar has signed for Atletico de Kolkata. So a lot of quality players they are going away from uh, the I-League teams. But at the same time, they have compensated those voids by recruiting some quality and talents. So, it would be a phenomenal uh, tournament despite the fact that the champions won't be able to play in the Champions League or uh, rather, not, not the Champions League, the Continental tournaments. So, it's, it's, it's good for Indian football that the competition level would be higher. And there were a lot of talks, a lot of debates about the standard of Indian football if, if you go and uh, have a look at the I-League as well as the ISL. So it would be different. It would be entirely different because the ISL, as we all know, there are a lot of words, a lot of news prints were wasted behind the ISL. A few people also discussed the fact that, okay, the ISL might be the tournament to look at because the international players are playing in this particular tournament. A lot of big names are playing in the tournament. A few uh, kind of coaches, the support staff, the officials, the fans, of teams like East Bengal and Mohan Bagan, they also say the same thing. The I League is much more competitive compared to the ISL. So, this would be the real test. Now, the champions, the standard of the leagues will now be very much evident. So, I'm looking forward to it. As it is evident, or rather known to all, Atletico de Kolkata has severed their ties with Atletico Madrid. After three successful seasons, they were champions in the debut season, semi-finalists in the second season, and they are currently the defending champions. So my question to you would be, how difficult would it be, like change of the entire management, entire board, or the setup has been entirely changed from Spanish to British? How do you look up to it? Well, uh, it's, it's a very, very important uh, question which you asked. Well, as you all know, I mean, even if you're a coach, if you have a winning combination, you don't look to break that. Exactly. But uh, somehow, some way or the other, it has been changed. So we, did, we should not go back uh, to what happened the last three seasons. Of course, we'll go back because the legacy has been there. They're the most successful team in the history of Euro Indian Super League. They were the semi-finalists in, in the second season. They were the champions in the first and third seasons. So, if you look back to that, I have uh, one definite point to raise. In the first season, it was Jose Antonio Havas who was the coach. The second season, it was Jose Antonio Havas who was the coach. So, the team finished as a champion as well as a semi-finalist. In the third season, we saw a different mindset altogether, a different coach, a different structure, new players. So, there, when the all the difference, because it's not just the players, it's not just the coach, it's the entire setup, the entire body language of the team, the entire spirit which matters. I'm sure with the, with the inclusion of Ashley Westwood, who has been so good in the context of Indian football, who has been a proven player, who has worked so well for Bengaluru FC, multiple time champions for 
I League, Federation Cups and all that, knows the pulse of Indian football, knows the standard of Indian football, knows all the players who have been signed by Atletico de Kolkata this season. And the most positive part about uh, Ashley Western and Atletico de Kolkata team management for this particular season is that, unlike the previous seasons, this time onwards, the coaching team of Ted Sheringham as well as Ashley Westwood, they are scouting the foreign players. So they know the pulse of the players, the capability of the players, the standard of the players. Because they were the ones who recruited the Indian players as well. And it was Ashley Wester who played a very important role behind it. Because he was the one who recruited the players because he knows the players. So he knows the uh, I mean, limitations of the players as well. And there goes the success of a team. This is a very well thought out plan to involve Atletico de Colca, uh, uh, sorry, in fact, uh, Ashley Westwood in terms of recruiting the foreign players as well. But Robbie Keane, it's a mind blowing sign. People might still question about uh, Yen Hume, who held the Postiga, because they delivered the goods for Atletico de Colca in the last couple of seasons. Now, all of a sudden, you've released them. You're bringing new stars to Indian football, but you're bringing home who have been tested. Teddy Sheringham played with Robbie Keane, so he knows the pulse of him. Ashley Westwood, he has seen British football a number of years, so he recruited him. At the same time, the Indian players, if you look at them, in fact, I was just uh, checking the likes of uh, Jay Shrani, Jay Shrani. such a wonderful player, full of creativity, spunk, enthusiasm, speed. That's what lagged for Atletico de Kolkata in the last season, despite the fact they were the champions. They played defensive football. They played a standard of football to bog down a bet, park the bus, and go for the counter and score a goal. If you go to Atletico de Kolkata's track record in the previous season, you'll see the team played very compact football, that's for sure. Defensive football, for sure. But at the same time, Atletico de Kolkata played on the counter attacks. That's why the number of goals which they scored in the previous season was probably the second lowest compared to all teams who played in the competition. But in the second season, despite the fact that Atletico de Kolkata finished as uh, a semi-finalist, they scored a lot of goals because Habas came out of his shell, produced the goods, played some attacking football. So it's not just attacking flair which made the difference. It's the mindset, the thought process, and which is going well for Atletico de Kolkata this season. Since you named the players, let's give a check to the players that were signed by the draft, especially the Indian players. We have the likes of Devjit Majundar and Pravid Das who were retained from the previous season. Well, I was, I was a bit surprised uh, with every due respect to Pravid Das because I like him a lot. He's a phenomenal player. He's, he's young. He has a lot of creativity. He's versatile. He can play on both the flanks. He can, he can defend. He can go for the counter. He can, he can play on the overlapping role. He's just such a good player. He can play as a defensive midfielder as well because in the 2015 season when he used to play for Dempo in the I-League, he used to play as a defensive midfielder. So the versatility is very much there. It's very much evident over there. So, Pravid Das is a quality player. But at the same time, I'd like to say, Pritam Kotal, I think Atletico de Kotal will be missing him, big time. Because Pritam is not only the best right fullback in India right now, but at the same time, Pritam gives you the luxury, the cushion to the defense, because Whenever Pritam Kotal goes for a counter, for the overlaps, it comes back so quickly. Cracks back in time. Correct. And at the same time, if you go for a total map, in fact, on the skate to the ground, he is just like a machine. He goes from one place to another. The other thing which comes handy about Pritam Kotal is long range scoring abilities. Yes. If you look at the game which India played against Macau in the AFC Asian Cup qualifiers, he took a few blind of shots, to be precise, which tested the goalkeeper, and that was almost 40, 40, 45 years out. He scored a magnificent goal against Royal Wahingo for Mohan Bagan in, in the 2015 season. And that too from the sideline. It shows that he has the knack of scoring goals. And that would be sorely missed. He has the experience. Right now, he'll find the replacements of a lot of players. But in terms of the right fullback, you'll hardly find any if you, you know, keep uh, Pritam Kotal after. So, Atletico de Kolkata is going to miss him big time. Devjit Mazumdar was a phenomenal vibe for Atletico de Kolkata because you know that was a tug of war which was going on between Atletico de Kolkata, Mohan Bagan, and his Bengal. But it was Atletico de Kolkata who had the last laugh. 
and which is good, which is good for Atletico to call this perspective because when you sign a goalkeeper of his stature, Devjit Mazumdar, who has been remarkably uh, the two, uh, I mean, two times Golden Glove winner in, ter in terms of the Indian uh, league structure, the I League. So, he was phenomenal. He was absolutely brilliant and he is the kind of a player who gives you the cushion. Uh, at the same time, he, he gives you the luxury, to be precise, that yeah, when you are recruiting him, you are recruiting a foreign goalkeeper stager. He can give you the cushion of a foreign goalkeeper. So it's it's always luxury. It's like it's 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 like Sunil Chetri. It's like Sunil Chetri. If you sign Sunil Chetri, what it happens is that it gives you the cushion. And even if you have uh, the lack of foreign strikers, Sunil Chetri can do it on his own because he has the quality of a foreign forward. So Devjit Mazumdar is almost like that. He's a goalkeeper. If you play him, you don't need a foreign goalkeeper. Going to the other players like Keegan Pereira, Anwar Ali and other signings, what is your say on that? I'm very much impressed with the way Atletico de Kolkata went for, uh, in fact, Jay Shani and Ashutosh Mehta. Same goes for Eugene Singh Lingdo? Absolutely, but Eugene Singh Lingdo is a phenomenal player. I'm a big fan of him, Eugene Singh Lingdo. He's a great player. He's a great potential. He's a leader on the midfield, on the heart of the midfield. He plays as a, as, as a core of orchestra. But at the same time, if you give a solid look to Eugene Singh Lingdo, his performance graph in the last couple of seasons has dipped a bit. So I do believe it would be Carl Baker who would be playing in place of Eugene Singh Lingdo at times when the team would be really looking for experience. So, it's, it's a good ploy, definitely. Eugen Singh Lingo has been a proven player. He has been a remarkable dead ball specialist. He's, he's so good with a ball. I mean, I hardly find any player these days uh, who has the capability of controlling the ball as good as Eugen Singh Lingo. He scored some brilliant long range goals over the years for Bengaluru FC. So, it would be, it would be a great buy for sure. In fact, Eugen Singh Lingo, as you mentioned. But at the same time, I'm highly impressed with Ashutosh Mehta. He's such a good player. So rock in the defense. Absolutely. And uh, at the same time, the positive about Ashutosh Mehta is that he can play on the wings, he can play as a side, a right full back. So Atletico de Kolkata knew it pretty well that we won't have the service of Pritam, Pritam Kota. Kota. Exactly. So that was a backup. And I don't think that's, that's a bad backup either. But you cannot find another Pritam Kota. That's for sure. See, uh, surprised about Keegan Pereira? No, I'm not surprised about Keegan Pereira because he is basically a Ashley Vested player. Ashley Vested knows him better than anybody else because he played, he groomed himself under, under, under Ashley Vested. And he knows the standard which he keeps for himself. He's a, he's, he's a total luxury to have a, a player like Keegan Pereira because it's, he's a kind of a player who can play as a left fullback. He's a kind of a player as a centre back. He can, he's a kind of a player who is good on his overlapping runs. So, in terms of the left fullback position, the base is covered. Keegan is a very good choice. At the same time, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be interesting to mention about uh, the inclusion of Bipin Singh. He's so underrated, but he's going to be the player to watch out. He's full of exuberance. He's full of youth. He's so good with a ball. He's he is by far one of the best left wingers in Indian football right now. He played some great games for Shillong Lajong in the previous season, the season before. So, if, if you have a, a close look at Bipin Singh's career graph, it's always being on the higher side. He's always a developing player. I'm sure with the, with the likes of uh, you know, Ashley Westwood and uh, you know, uh, Teddy Sheringham, he'd be getting better and better as the day progresses. And He's, he's certainly be the, the player to watch out, Bipin Singh. I'd be uh, very much eager to see Robin Singh under, under um, Ashley Ashley Westwood. Westwood. Because Robin Singh, as we all know, he has, he has always been the potential to do well. Robin Singh is a kind of a player who always gives you that cushion on the up front, his physique. He, he's the only you know, forward in Indian football these days who has a physique like an European guy. He can fight. He can play a lot of, uh, bring a lot of physicality on the attacking front. So that's that's going to be that's going to be a key. In fact, 
with the likes of Zakina, as you mentioned before as well, Zakina represented in five youth group levels in, in, in uh, the Portuguese national team. So he has the experience of playing at the highest level. And I'm sure the partnership between Zakina and uh, Robbie Keane and uh, Robin Singh would be uh, nightmares for all the teams who will be playing in the Euro Indian Super League 2017-18 season. And we must mention about Robbie Keane. People are then talking about uh, his age, he's 37 years of age, he's, he's, he has lost his prime. If you lo lose your prime, you cannot score 83 goals in 129 games in the last two, three seasons. So all we can say is easy is just a number. He is easy is just a number. In fact, it's, 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 it's very much evident about uh, Thierry Henry as well when he played in, in uh, the MLS. He scored a lot of goals. In fact, David Villa, he has got a call up in, in the Spanish national team. Spanish squad. Despite being uh, 35, 36 years of age. So, age is just a number. It's your fitness, your eagerness, your, your source of energy and definitely the hunger to score goals which matters. Well, I think uh, buying Augustine Fernandez but it's a, a gamble. gamble. It's a gamble. Uh, Augustine is a fine player. When he gets going, he's, he's so versatile. He can play as a full back, he can play as a centre back. He's good. Uh, Stretches for, out wide. Yes. And We've he, seen that a couple of and times. He has been, yes, and he has been tested in Atletico de Colcata's format as well because he was there in the previous. Uh, First season. I mean, no, he was there in the second season. Second season. And Atletico de Colcata, despite the fact that they finished as a semi finalist, Augustin Fernandez was the standout performer. So he's, he's a magnificent player, but at the same time, we have to give it a close look that he's still having his rehab, he's not yet match fit. And you know, in a tournament, in a competition, the high intensity uh, tournament like ISL, you need to have full fitness and he's yet to gain his match fitness. Coming back to the uncapped players. That's yes. Kolkata sport. Correct. What's your uh, Yes, as you mentioned, I mean, uh, Hitesh Sharma. He's a magnificent player, under 21, he's, he's full of youth, he has been tested and he's a kind of a player who can give a lot of variety to Atletico de Kolkata. I'm not too sure that how many games he's going to play, but the experience which he'd be sharing, the dressing room which he'd be sharing with other players, that's going to be the key. At the same time, I'd be eager to see the likes of Ronald Sheikon. Ashley Westwood knows him pretty well, he had a good research behind him. And that's why he has brought him. These are the players for the future, as I mentioned before the discussion begin. Who can bring about a change in the game. Correct. They are like 20, 25 minutes player now. As of now. Correct. With the day progresses, with the confidence they are beginning, they are becoming better players. And that's good for Indian football as well, because if you want to eye the 2026 World Cup, this would be the platform. And I'm sure that Lady Bodhi Kolkata has a very good team, unlike uh, quite a few areas which I'm going to mention. Uh, the goalkeeper, the foreign goalkeeper which, which, which they have signed in fact. The foreign goalkeepers which they have signed, uh, in fact, Jesse Albert uh, and Jessica Lyson. In fact, he's a, he's a Premier League legend, no doubt about it. But at the same time, if you look at his age, he's 43 years of age. So, that's a very important thing. You cannot add much more, which was expected. But he can be a mentor. He can be a mentor for the goalkeepers like Kunjan Bhutia. He can be a goal mentor for the goalkeepers like Debjit Mazumdar as well. In the big games, he might play a very important role as well. Because we have, we have seen Peter Shilton to play in 42, 43 years of age. So for the goalkeeper's perspective, if he can maintain the standard of his fitness, it's always good. It's, it's, it's always good. So, it's very important. At the same time, I'd be, I'd be eager to mention uh, the likes of uh, you know, Connor Thomas. It's a very sensible buy. Connor Thomas, he played English football over the years. He played in FA Cups. He played in League Cups, Curling Cups. He knows the you know, competitive football, the international football. So, with the likes of Connor Thomas being involved in Atletico de Kolkata, and with the mentorship of uh, Teddy Sheringham, I'm sure that he'll be gaining experience at the same time, he'll be providing a lot of goods to Atletico de Kolkata. Okay, now shifting to the most important part of the topic, that's the signing of the foreign players. Correct. Like Atletico de Kolkata has lost the likes of Samit Duti, Yan Hume, Correct. and most importantly, the, their most versatile defender, Tiri. Yeah. 
Uh, good question. In fact, I, I do believe that they have bases covered in terms of the defense. Uh, they knew that TD won't be available. So they have signed, uh, of course, Tom Thorpe. They have already signed Jordi Figueres Monia. I mean, Jordi uh, played in Spanish top tier league for years. He played for Celta Vigo. He played for uh, SS Santander as well. He played in La Liga. He tested in La Liga. If you play against the likes of Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, automatically your confidence level goes to a higher stature. It gives you the feeling that if I can stop these two players, I can stop any player in the world. So I'm sure with the likes of Tom Thorpe, it would be a new experience for him because this should probably be the pair on the heart of the defense as Anwar Ali as a backup. Anwar, Anwar Ali is a very good defender, in fact, uh, despite the fact that he has been uh, playing Indian football for a lot of years. But the only thing which, which you know, pushed him uh, a little further is his fitness level. So that is the thing which I want to mention. At the same time, Anwar Ali, Tom Thorpe, Jordi, one of the strongest defensive uh, organizations in Hugh Indian As Sufi. well as Ashutosh Mehta. Ashutosh Mehta can be a defender, but he would be rather an attacking role to be playing. At the same time, Keegan Pereira would be probably playing on the left, or Augustin Fernandez. So, or Rupert Nongram on the right. So, these things will come handy. So, I do believe in terms of defense, Thierry's absence won't be a big deal. Because Atletico de Kolkata, if you look back the history, they have been one of the strongest teams in terms of the defense. And they have built their defense on their own as well for this season onwards. Some shrewd uh, team selections, some shrewd uh, foreign recruitments, but it's good. So I guess we'll have to call it an end. Thank you What's, so much. Uh, last question, uh, your prediction. Well, uh, the season is yet, is yet to begin to be precise and it's, it's too early to make a comment on that because uh, a few other teams which we'll be discussing in the next few days like the Jimshedpur FC, they have been a magnificent team on the paper. Though, as I mentioned for a number of times, that football cannot be played on papers, but still, I mean, you cannot deny the fact that they are quality players. So, Jamshed would have a very good sign. Bengaluru FC, they have been successful over the years for, it, for their team builder process as well as the thought process which they are bringing. They have very good coaches in the forms of Alba Troca. So, they are good. At the same time, if you go back and see the teams like Delhi Dynamos, they would be one of the dark horses this, this season onward because they have a lot of young players. The players were tested in under 28, uh, 20, 21 or rather under 1911. You have the teams like Northeast United, based on the Highlander, Highlander players, to be precise. If you go back to FC Goa, they have a better side compared to the previous seasons. And don't forget, they were the multiple time semi finalists. Chennai and FC, they have a very good side. They are good on paper and they have a very good set mindset. I'm sure with, with the new coach which they have brought, we have a lot of experience in terms of foreign football, English football. They're good. I'd be, eagerly, be eager to watch uh, with the way Kerala Blasters plays this season. Because not just uh, the fact that I'm a big Manchester United fan, but at the same time, <laughs> Rene Millenstein would be a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant in, in a coach to be precise to groom all these players. He produced players like Ryan Giggs, Cristiano Ronaldo, Berbatov, and Wes Brown. And they have, he has two of his students back in, at Manchester United as well, in the forms of Dibita Berbatov as well as West Brown. And they have some phenomenal boys, boys to precise. They're in, in talks with Julio Baptista as well. So I'm eager to watch. Okay, thank you. Pleasure. See you in the next episode. Hit the subscribe option and the bell icon to get all the exclusive sports videos on Extra Time.